Hello Pisces and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. And this is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs. Looking at your connection to the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. We are looking at all three sides of the connection. So we've got your energy toward it, their energy toward it, and the energy in between it. The concept being that there are three sides to every story. So we're looking at your version of the truth, their version of the truth, and this higher level unbiased truth in the middle. This middle section is looking at what is the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to move or in order to align further with your higher self. As I do in all of my readings, I have pulled the overall energy and clarified those messages as well as the overall theme for the reading, which we will jump into in just a second. But I still have a different tarot deck I will be pulling from for each side of this connection as well as the advice deck I will be using to close out the reading in the extended. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading with me is in the description box below. Last thing, please remember that these are general readings. They are not here to resonate fully for everyone and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So please remember to take what does resonate and helps your personal situation and leave what does not. On that note, the whole reading can be reversed. If that is the case for you, that's totally fine and totally normal. Again, take what helps, leave what doesn't. All right, let's jump on in, Pisces. On your side of this connection, you have options are kept open with the five of swords here. So this is interesting because I feel as if you have a deep desire for this connection. But with this five of swords here, I don't feel like you trust this person at all. And I think that that's kept you in this space of trying to, you know, like with the options are kept open, I feel like just like, trying your hardest to like keep your mind open in a way to how things are going to turn out and what it's going to look like for you in the end but I feel as if there is a part of you that really is kind of hanging on to this person and hanging on to their energy at the very least um but you know we usually have our reasons for that so I'm sure you do too now this person they have second option with the five of pentacles here so I feel as if this person doesn't want to lose you. Like they don't want to lose this connection. I feel like they value having you in their life, but I feel as if they, they at the same time don't prioritize the connection, like don't prioritize you. Almost make you feel like an option or make you feel as if, you know, you are being taken for granted. And I feel as if that's why you're kind of in this defensive energy is you're like, listen, you know, I am deserving of being treated well. I'm deserving of experiencing um, commitment and I feel I honestly feel like that's what this is about is a lack of commitment to you and to you know doing what is necessary to make the com the connection work so then you're like well I'm not going to commit if you're not going to commit um, and I feel like it's just kind of this push pull energy in between this connection you have commitment with the page of cups in reverse so there's the commitment right lack of commitment that we were talking about but there is this energy of emotional unavailability and I'm not gonna lie Pisces I think this is coming from both sides and this could happen in a couple of different ways there could be you know I feel as if this person is there this person's emotional unavailability is keeping them from being able to fully commit and since they won't commit you're not wanting to commit to the connection so you're trying to keep your options open but you're actually coming off as emotionally unavailable because you're still holding on to this connection. So I feel like this runs a little bit deep. Um, the overall theme for this reading is karmic path. So there's a karmic lesson associated with this connection, which I feel is why um, you're having a hard time letting go or, you know, investing in something else. Cause you're, maybe you're like, oh, I want to move forward from this or I want to choose something else, but I just keep pulling, like being drawn back to this connection or pulled back to this connection, which is making it hard for you to do so. But let's see let's just jump in this is for Pisces side of the connection to the person they are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now this is Pisces side of this connection oof okay page of wands ten of wands Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, hang on. I want a little bit more <laughs> on this really quick. Because this is a pretty intense first message. Yeah. Okay. So you're feeling pretty burdened 
by this connection in a way. It's almost as if you're like, man, I maybe you wish you, you had never met this person or my life would be easier um, if this person didn't exist. Or, you know, I, and I'm not saying it has to be that extreme, but I do feel as if this connection is putting a lot of weight um, on you. And I think that with this Ten of Cups in reverse, the what why this connection is putting so much on you is because you see the potential in it. I feel like you see what it could be, you see what it be, could become, and it's making it hard for you to make the best decision for yourself because I feel like you see all the good in it. Even though it's not, you know, this person isn't prioritizing you and showing up for you, you're like, if this person did do that, then this could be so good. And that potential really keeps you hanging on, which is kind of where that burden lies. Cause you're like, you know, this is as good as it's ever felt for me before. Um, you know, I've never experienced like anything like this before, which kind of keeps you holding on to what it could be. And I think like, I'm speaking to a collective, like even if you don't want to anymore, that's why I get that that's kind of this burden of, you know, I don't um, want to be so affected by this connection anymore. Maybe you want to be able to move on. Maybe you want to find freedom from it, but this potential just really keeps you, um, keeps you hanging on and it keeps you kind of stuck to, like I said, like what could be. All right, Pisces side of this connection. Whoa, okay. There's definitely a distance between you and this person. So I don't know. It doesn't need to be like a straight up separation. It could be, but I feel like you and this person, there's definitely some distance here. You have the Ace of Cups, the Tower, and the Seven of Cups. I get that with the Three of Cups in reverse. That's where I feel like there's this distance. Um, I feel as if this connection has you really confused. I feel as if this person is a little wishy-washy with their energy. They might say one thing like, oh, I really care about you and I really want to make you this work and you know, blah, blah, blah. But then they turn around and maybe they do another. Like their actions are totally not in alignment with their words. Or like sometimes things are really good and you're like, oh my gosh, like things might really work out this time. And then other days you're like, what the heck? Like I, you haven't heard from them in, in several days or whatever the case might be. And I feel like that keeps you really confused. And, and again, not knowing, it's almost like keeps you hanging on. And I feel like that's, um, you know, like I said, this person doesn't want to lose you, but they also aren't, you know, committing. And I think that that can be really difficult because you're like, well, I don't want to lose this either, but I also need commitment. Now, even if you're in a marriage with this person, like you've been together for a long time and they're just not committed, like one foot in, one foot out, wishy-washy kind of energy, you know, not committed you know, showing up in, for the connection. And I feel like this is about needing to be honest with yourself about what it is that you need and what this person is continuously giving you. Um, you know, people really do show us who they are and we have to learn to believe them. But a lot of the times we have a tendency to view people through the lens of who we think that they could be, you know, that potential or who we want them to be instead of who they constantly show us that they are. And I feel like this is about kind of allowing yourself to see this person as they are and truly ask yourself, like, is this enough for me? If this person never changes, if they continue to show up with the energy that they're currently showing up with, if they don't ever commit, is that enough for you? And I hope your answer is no, because you're deserving of someone who does show up for you and who does commit to you and who does choose you and make you feel chosen, committed to, and seen, heard, and all of the things that you're looking for. This is for Pisces side of this connection. The devil. So there's an attachment because I feel like you're desiring a new beginning in this connection. Like whether you like it or not, you're wanting, um, you're wanting this to pan out. You're wanting a new beginning with this person. And I feel like, you know, sometimes when we don't realize it, we attach ourselves so much to what we think that we need or what we even think that we want that we say it's almost like whether or not we realize that we close off our hearts to any other outcome. And a part of us says, this is the only way that I'm going to be able to experience the love I truly deserve and desire. So you might feel like you're trying to keep your options open or keep an open mind, but at your core, you're attached to this idea that if this person doesn't choose you or start to prioritize you or commit, that you're going to end up alone or you're going to end up having to settle or basically in your mind, nothing is ever going to be as good as it could be if this connection, um, you know, came together. And I feel like that's where 
there there's kind of this karmic experience happening is it's keeping you stuck in the experience of not having the love that you deserve and desire because you know you have this idea of saying it has to come from this person it has to be this person if it's not them it's no one which is keeping you from being able to open your heart to maybe different outcomes now I'm not saying it has to be somebody else okay I'm not saying that this person you know this connection is doomed by any means but I do feel as if you've created this attachment in your mind which is where this burden comes from because you truly believe that if they if it's not them that you're not going to be loved in the way that you deserve and desire and you know that's become your personal truth and we can get ourselves into trouble when we do that you know I think that we tend to do that when we experience a connection that's like the best we've ever experienced before you know when it's something is um, when we have intense feelings for someone that we've never felt before someone kind of matches um the idea of what we've always thought we wanted on paper and things like that you know we'll start to say oh like this must be it for me um, when in reality what it is that you're actually wanting which is commitment and someone to show up for you and love you unconditionally that stuff is is missing so you have to ask yourself is this connection actually what i think i want or is the potential of what this could be what I'm holding on to. And I will say, you know, we often invest in potential because we think that, um, you know, we, we see the good in people. And seeing the good in people is not a bad quality to have. It's an absolutely wonderful quality to be empathetic and to see, you know, people through that light. It becomes an issue whenever we ignore the way that we're being treated or the way, you know, the level of love that they're able to give because we're we're so attached to what that potential could be that we kind of ignore what they actually show up as and that can keep us stuck in believing um, or like more waiting you know we're waiting for them to get better waiting on them to choose us waiting on them to commit to us which just keeps us in this energy of waiting on somebody else to choose us when in reality you know if we're waiting on somebody else to choose us it's a deep reflection of how we're actually waiting on us to choose us all right this person's energy toward pisces second option with the five of pentacles this person's energy toward Oh, that came out immediately. Oh, okay, hang on. The High Priestess with the Five of Cups. Interesting. Okay, 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 hang on. I want to clarify this High Priestess because I think it's actually referring to, like, you more, but I'll explain in a second. The Hermit. Yeah, okay, okay. So I feel as if you have a very intuitive connection to this person. So, you know, I feel as if you're able to kind of understand them on a deeper level. And like, like I said, like empathize with them. And with this five of cups here, I feel like, you know, you kind of see this person and where they're at through the lens of empathy. Because this five of cups is, is kind of this energy of sadness and, and grief maybe even or just like um I don't know just just not generally being in a good place and I feel as if you kind of feel that in them and that's why you have so much empathy for them which again is a wonderful quality to have but are you directing that empathy back to yourself I think that that's kind of the the key question that you're needing to ask yourself here this person's energy toward Pisces This person chooses isolation, hermit in reverse. And I feel like, e even though I don't think that they actually want that, it's like despite what they want, despite what they desire here at Nine of Pentacles, despite what they desire, it's almost as if they, they choose or prefer isolation. It's almost like they don't want to let anyone in. They don't want to get too close. They don't want you know you to get too close. So they don't want to commit because they don't, First of all, you know, people who push other people away to the extent of isolation are t typically people who um, are used to being hurt. And so they protect themselves by from never getting hurt again by trying to, um, you know, almost eliminate 
that opportunity of being hurt again, even though they deeply desire the love that they're looking for, which would require them to open up. It's like they're still kind of pushing it away and choosing this this self-isolation, this withdrawal. And I think that, you know, I think that that's, again, why it's hard for you in this connection because I do feel as if you you very much care about this person and I feel as if you feel for them. And I think that, you know, this world would be an absolutely better place, much better place, if everybody had just a little bit more empathy. Um, but I also feel like, you know, there is, you know, there is something called like toxic empathy, which is where you basically have empathy for others to the extent that it's harmful to yourself. It's, it's lacking self-love and it, but yet empathizing with and loving others um, fully. And I think that that might be a little bit of what's going on here, Pisces. Because you can empathize with someone and understand where they're coming from while at the same time recognizing that you deserve better. And I think that that's, what, that's the kind of tricky balance that you're needing to find here is being able to say, yes, I, I care about you and I love you and I wish this could be what it could be, but I can't continue to subject myself to the way that this makes me feel and I have to choose better for me and I have to be willing to let go of what could be and love myself more than I love the potential of this connection. And when you're able to get to that point, which does take healing and a lot of growth, um, to be able to do that, but that's typically where you're, you start to attract the people into your life that will choose you and will prioritize you. This person's energy toward Pisces. It's like they don't want to lose you, but they don't want to let you in. Ace of Wands in reverse. There's a, a lack of action here. It's like, um, I know, I think that that's where I struggle a lot with people and this I will say a reason that I struggle a lot with this is because this is actually somebody that I used to be I used to struggle with this myself um, but I struggle a lot with people who um, you know don't do the healing don't take accountability and don't grow and kind of live in a victim mentality where nothing ever works out for them they have all of these issues and all of these problems but yet they're not doing anything to better their problems or better themselves. In fact, a lot of their actions will actually align with creating more problems for themselves. Again, the reason I struggle so much with that um, is because that used to be, I used to struggle with that myself. I used to do that. Um, and luckily I have kind of had an awakening that, that pushed me to grow. But, you know, it's hard because yeah, this person might be struggling and they might not be in the best place, but it doesn't really feel as if they're doing anything to help themselves. And I think that that's where we have to learn that yes, we can support other people on their healing and growth journey. And we can be there to, you know, help other people become whoever they can be. But that person has to be just as committed to themselves and to their healing journey. And they're just not, which is a direct reflection of why they won't commit to the connection. It goes hand in hand. So, you know, I think that the more that you look at it from the perspective, okay, this person not committing to me or choosing me has very little to do with me and more to do with like what they're dealing with. You know, their emotional unavailability and pushing people away and preferring isolation is a result of them being hurt in the past, right? Their past hurt, their trauma, whether it's from childhood or past relationships, whatever the case is, that um, is unfair to them. Absolutely. And, you know, that, you know, trauma is never our fault, but it is our responsibility because we have to be willing to kind of face the things that push away the things that we desire. You know, so much of the time we don't realize how our trauma or the ways that we've been hurt in the past dictate our decisions now and I feel like that's a lot of what's happening for this person it's, it's like yeah I desire the love that Pisces has to give but you know I don't know how to open up to love because of my past I prefer isolation I'm going to continue to push Pisces away and they might again you might know like they love you they care about you or again you really feel for them which is why I feel like you're so empathetic but it's almost like you have to kind of have empathy to the senses you, you have to take you have to have empathy without taking on other people's stuff and being able to say this is not my problem to fix I'm not here to heal you I'm not here to fix you that's not my role I'm here to make sure that I'm supporting um myself enough to be able to support others in their journey but if you're all of your energy is going towards trying to help this person 
um, then it's going to be hard for you to find, to get what it is that you ultimately need in this connection. And it's not going to be sustainable in the end. Pisces side of this connection to the person they are dealing with. This is for Pisces side of this connection. I feel like you put a lot of work in to this connection. And I feel like, um, you, like I said, you put a lot of effort into it. And yet this person still won't commit. They still won't like be, show up for it in the way that you're, you're looking for. And I feel like it's this continuous cycle of you giving, you know, what you can and showing up for it. And, you know, at the same time, you know, you're like, well, I'm not going to fully commit if you're not going to fully commit, but yet you're still trying to put effort into it to make it into something that you want it to be, which just continues to lead you to disappointment with the five of cups. I feel both people in this connection are disappointed with how things pan out, have planned out. But I also feel at the same time, you know, the only way that we ever learn and grow is through accountability and being willing to say, okay, what, uh, you know, what did I do to push this away? Or what did I do? Um, to, to not let this person in or what did I do to try to change this person or whatever the case might be so that we can break out of cycles that keep us stuck in and not experiencing the love that we truly desire because there is a cycle going on here. It's a cycle of disappointment. It's like no matter how hard you try here, this person continues to disappoint you. And I think that a lot of it has to do with whatever it is that they're dealing with and absolutely nothing to do with you. So it's almost this need to understand that the universe is saying you, you know, you can have what you want in love. Spirit is saying you can absolutely have what it is that you desire, but you have got to be willing to let go of the idea that like there's only one way or that it has to be this person. Because I feel like there's this attachment to feeling like it has to be this person. And I'm not saying it can't be, but the more you think it has to be, the more closed off you might be to opportunities that could end up being better for you. Pisces side of this connection. Four of Cups. There's a need to look at things a little differently, to redirect your focus. Because I feel like um, a lot of your focus might be, why won't they commit to me? Like, what is it about me that makes this person not want to commit? Why am I not good enough? What did I not do that wasn't good enough, you know, for them? I, I feel like you're needing to understand that it really doesn't have to do any, it really has nothing to do with this person. Um, you know, I learned luckily um, on my journey that no matter how much we love somebody, if that person isn't capable of loving us in the way that we deserve, we have to be willing to let go of that connection to protect ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, we can do it with love. We can do it from this place of saying, I love you and I care about you, but this is harmful to me. And this is, you know, this is affecting me. This is making me feel bad about myself. This is making, this is taking up so much of my energy that I feel drained. You know, when you are coming from that space of being willing to, to kind of protect yourself a little bit, then I feel like you'll, it's protecting yourself from the people who don't know how to love you and opening yourself up from the people who do. And being able to understand that, the people who don't know how to love you aren't a reflection of what you're deserving of, um, but a reflection of as good as you think it can get for you. So in your mind, this connection is as good as you think it can get for you, which is why I feel like there's this attachment to it. Pisces side of this connection to the person they are dealing with. Oh, okay. Oh, it's this one. Page of Cups in reverse with the sun. Okay. One of the things that kind of surprised me on my healing journey that really opened up my eyes to a lot of the unhealthy dynamics in my relationships was we tend to attract emotionally unavailable people because we ourselves 
are are emotionally unavailable and we don't know how to let love in and how to let ourselves be happy and loved so we look for what it is that we desire and people who don't know how to provide us we all have an ego our ego is not to be demonized it is literally um its purpose is to keep you alive its purpose is to literally keep you Um, surviving and so what it will do is it will actually choose situations that it knows it can survive so your ego actually prefers the lack of love and abundance and success and good goodness that you desire or it it actually prefers the lack of it um, instead of actually experiencing those things because it knows how to survive that experience it knows how to not be loved and so when we chase Um, the love that we desire and emotionally unavailable people and we hold on and attach to that, there's a part of us that is saying, you know, this is, I'm going to continue to look for it in this because I know I'm never going to receive it, which is where I feel the most comfortable. Now, consciously, we're trying to, we're hoping that it changes. We're hoping that this person sees our value and that they decide to finally commit or to choose us or whatever the case is. But on a subconscious level, which is where 95% of our decision making comes from is our subconscious is saying this is what feels safe and this is what feels comfortable so on some level you yourself are emotionally unavailable by looking for love in places you know you can't find it you know emotional unavailability comes in a couple of different ways it's either chasing love in people who don't know how to provide it or pushing away love in people who do provide it for you and oftentimes you can actually tend to take on the role of both which is why i always always encourage looking at your connections through the lens of a mirror and seeing you know kind of how that person is reflecting something that's going on within you all right this person's energy toward pisces it got dark out it's got dark and stormy it's been sunny all day long this person's energy toward pisces independence theme going on with this person which is what it's like but it it's this energy of like preferring it's kind of like okay how do I say if you don't rely on anyone no one can let you down like you know if you don't let people in no one can hurt you um but at the core of it they desire because every human desires to love and be loved on some level you know we are love Um, We desire to experience that in real form. Um, And it's like, even though they desire that, there's this like independence theme. I don't know. I don't know, like I'm better off alone. It's weird because I don't think that's actually what this person wants. You know, hyper-independence is a trauma response. You know, I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody to help me. Um, All I do is hurt people, whatever the case might be. And I think that, I just, I feel a lot of empathy in this reading from you, Pisces. I feel a lot of empathy and wanting to, to be there for this person and love them and help them and all of the wonderful things. And, you know, I think that, that is absolutely okay. You know, it is never a bad thing to help other people, but I do feel like it, it has become a detriment to you. You know, this is feeling like a burden. It's weighing you down. You know, it's keeping you from being able to experience the love you truly deserve and desire. It's, it's learning to kind of, you know, have empathy and love people from a distance while also understanding that they might just not be able to provide you with the love that you're looking for. And that's okay. You know, it's, it just, it's a sign from the universe that that person isn't meant for you at this time, um, which can be hard, but it can also open you up to, you know, still making the best decision for yourself, even if you think it's not actually what's best for somebody else. This person's energy toward Pisces. They're stuck. This person's very stuck. I don't know. It's like, It's a lot of reverse cards for them. Um, I don't know what they're stuck on. I don't know if it's the past. I don't know if it's just, I don't know. I just, I feel like this person is very stuck in their life and 
maybe you showed up and you were like, I want to, I want to help you move. You know, I'm here to, I'm here to love you and I'm here to support you and I'm here to, and they're like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. It's like, they literally won't let you love them. They won't commit to it in the way that is needed for you to feel safe in this connection. And that's, that's ultimately what you're deserving of. You know, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, you, you have so much to give here, Pisces, and you are just as deserving of everything that you have to give. And it might be like, oh, well, this person loves me. Like, I know they do. And that might be true. But the thing is, you deserve someone who both loves you and knows how to show up for that love, who knows how to choose to love you every single day in the way that you deserve. Um, and those people do exist. There are people out there who are meant to love you in the way that you've always looked for. But I feel like a lot of your time and energy is is kind of going toward being so attached to like this person's healing journey. I need them to heal. I need them to grow. I need them to, you know, do these things in order for me to be loved. And you don't. I just, I feel like there's this energy of feeling like you need this person and you don't need them. Um, in order to be happy and loved in the way that you deserve and desire. And I think the more that you can disconnect and detach from the outcome of this connection, the easier it's going to be to kind of to choose yourself and to break this cycle because there is something very karmic going on here. And karmic situations can really be hard to move on from, but there's a reflection within you that this is trying to bring to the surface. You know, I learned as I healed, the people that I was once attracted to or like that I was once attached to, that started to change because I started to be more attached to the people who would treat me well and could not attach to but attracted to the people who would and could treat me well. And I stopped looking for love in the wrong places because I started recognizing that I was deserving of it. You know, our what we're attracted to really does start to change as we heal and grow. So if you're like, oh, I don't know how I'm ever going to be happy without this person, focus on your healing. Focus on what this is bringing out in you. Focus on why you're looking for love and someone who doesn't know how to give it to you and why you think it has to come from this person because um, that might give you insight into why the attachment is there because attachments will fade as healing happens you know we'll start to let go of things that we think we need and start to open ourselves up to what it is we truly deserve all right one more per one more card for this energy this person's energy toward pisces This person's energy toward Pisces, Pisces. See, and I feel like you know this because there's the high priestess again. Like this person isn't in a good place right now. And, you know, I think that it's hard when people that we love aren't in a good place because, again, we want to help them. But, you know, it just seems as if this person isn't doing anything to help themselves. And there is... So that saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can't, you are not here to heal anyone, Pisces. You're not here to fix anyone. You are not here to save anybody, okay? Your value does not determine or is it not dependent on um, how much you help or serve or sacrifice for other people. Service comes from this place of loving yourself enough to spread that to others, but but making sure that you're taken care of taken care of too. And in this connection, it's either you're taking care of this person and you're not taken care taken care of at all, um, you know, or nothing. And I feel like that's where you're having to kind of shift your perspective on what's really going on here, because it is a karmic cycle. You do deserve commitment. You deserve someone who is going to commit to you in the way that you deserve. But I feel like there's a need to look at why you're looking for it in somebody or why you're hoping for it or holding on to it in somebody who consistently continues not to give it to you because that's a cycle. That's not, you know, that there's something, there's something deeper going on, which is what we're trying to address in this reading. Um, okay. In between this connection, you have commitment with the page of cups in reverse. So we're going to pull nine different messages looking at the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. And then I have an advice card to pull at the end. Thank you so much, Pisces, as always, for your support of my channel. I do hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, I wish you nothing but love and healing on your journey moving forward. All right, bye, Pisces.